All right, all right, everybody. Here we are. We're doing uh, Kome is the way. So I I think this is the decision that I'm gonna that I'm gonna make for everybody. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a, a tutorial narrative campaign that I'm gonna be working on always, and that's gonna be this one right now. Um, and it's not just gonna be a regular tutorial. This is gonna be like as galaxy brain as I can make it, but I am gonna gear it towards people who want to play it as a campaign. I'm gonna talk about where um forks could exist for somebody to do a, a like a world conquest or a speed run but i'm not gonna focus on that that's that that would make the tutorial an extremely specialized guide that no one would care about but by making something where like i'm gonna show you guys how to do a narrative structure that allows you to convince yourself that uh everything you're doing is totally totally in character while also being a lot stronger than than what we're what we're seeing right now. So right now what we do is we've we've had like we've had a secret a secret cabal has approached us, the Emperor Kome. So we're role playing as Emperor Kome in this in this campaign campaign right now. Um we and it, it we might play through until his death. That might be that might be what we do. Uh, that might be the campaign. But right now we are we are working with this special this special cabal, and these three dudes all really hate the shogun, and so have approached us and said we have an incredible an incredible plan to throw the shogun out of power. Are you in? And we said yes. Um, and so we've got ourselves a Diplo 20 character. We've got ourselves like a, a an Intrigue 20 character. Um, and we've got ourselves our, our, our very loyal, um, this character has a hundred loyalty or whatever kind of character. Like we've, we've got, we've got a, we've got a little, a little group of folks that we're working with to, to overthrow the Shogun. I'm so excited to show you this. This is, this is going to be, this is going to be really fun because we're going to do a lot of weird things mechanically that like you would not normally think to do, um, unless you're crazy. And if you are crazy, boy, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. You are going to love this. If you're, if you want to learn how to play the game, not just well, but very well. Um, you're you are gonna love this, uh, but yeah, we are we are working with that nice little that nice little cadre of dudes, and their plan is um, so Matsudaira Ma Masujiro. He's our he's our friend who's in control of the shogunate, uh, the the Bakufu direct control forces. He's the one who's like coordinating everything from behind the scenes within the shogun's power structure, but he is pretending to be cruel. So everywhere he goes, he's going to be mean. Um, in case you in case you want to do this on your own, the, literally the only thing that matters here is Jingoist. It's helpful if you don't have pacifists because you're going to need to do colonization um, and pacifists are opposed to that. So it's, it's helpful to not have pacifists and to specifically have this dude as Jingoist. That one's necessary though. The other stuff, just not pacifists and you'll be fine. Um, so, so right. Uh, Matsudaira Ma uh, Masujiro, he is intentionally treating his lackeys very poorly in this time frame. Um, if if one of our if one of our main characters dies before before we're ready, we will we will reload because this is again. If you are a speedrunner, you understand that there is RNG that's going to occur, and and like we if you are serious about speedrunning, the character will survive. And so I'm, I want to demonstrate to you as well what it would be like if the character had survived, because that's that's something that didn't happen in the uh, the video that I recorded. He died really early, but he's he this dude is gonna be a goddamn powerhouse. Buddhist monks are gonna be at like forty five percent, and that's gonna be good, because because remember we are working on um, we're working on building up the country. So, so the Tokugawa have overseen like an incredibly long period of economic growth uh, based off of stability because they, they really just have not been getting into a lot of wars. And so the population of Japan's gotten very large, um, but the, in, alongside the population of Japan getting very large, there have been some things. Taxation capacity, this number doesn't matter. I, I talk about it a lot in other videos, but to, to summarize it, the, it only matters whenever your pops are not peasants and they're all peasants right now, so this number is useless. You can just re right click it. It does not. It does not matter. And if you don't understand, then ask in the comments. I will tell you, but it doesn't matter. 
Wood in the Japanese market, on the other hand, does matter. So that's why, even though we started with a bunch of construction sectors here, we did not do 10 in a row, because then we'd just be paying a lot for it for no reason. So we did five, 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 five. So we're building up Kansai. That's that's pretty accurate. So what we're doing is is behind the shadows. Maybe the maybe Komei is our our um, steward twenty five character. That's that's who he is. He's our steward twenty five character, and he's the one who's like helping negotiate all of these all of these construction plans. Right? That makes sense. I, that's a flavor win. Flavor win. We're gonna do that because I want this in addition to being a good tutorial series for you. I want it to be narrative. I want there to be fun stuff going on. I want to feel invested in the characters and not just like the numbers that they're going to give us. Though the numbers that they are going to give us are going to be pretty good. I, I, I am certain about that. So we did not get the first roll on professional armies, but we do have um, a 15% chance because we got advance. Um, so that's fine. It's okay. If you, if you, if you want to re-roll it, you can, but I'm not, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Not the goal not the goal we're just building stuff we're just building stuff and we're having fun you can easily hit that first roll but uh, that's not what we're doing in this universe Kome hears um rumors from the shogun about what's been going on in terms of their political power all of a sudden you notice that their political power has gone down a lot and it's really just exactly that you see this here this is this is Pops moving from um, the shogunate over to the Buddhist monks because because uh, Matsudaira is he's just he's just cruel he's just mean and and by by treating all of the people who work for him like trash they're leaving and that's and that's that's good because um, Oshio is not just like none of these characters have any of these little bips I just I like I like Crusader Kings two and three two I'm gonna do probably some ck3 after the unfan fork when it drops and then i'm probably going to do some after uh, after the unfan fork for ck2 as well so if if you want to see that it's it's going to be on the same channel i know that there are like reasons to not do that for the algorithm but i don't I, I don't think that it's wrong if you know it's wrong then let me know uh-oh uh-oh oshio has become an alcoholic hopefully he does not die it's a minus five percent health uh Ugh, 95% health. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. The stress of the stress of the the initial planning phase, it's just it's just gotten to him, that's all. That's all. And we tick along, we tick along. I can kick this up to speed 3. That's okay. So the technology, we started with colonization. I apologize for people who are watching this in like rapid succession, succession that I keep going over the same things over and over again, but I'm gonna reiterate the things that are important. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go back over and tell you stuff that's not important. Um, but the technology that's important, colonization's important if you want Hokkaido, which for a campaign, you do. Hokkaido's pretty good. Uh, it's worth it's worth getting. It, it doesn't matter if, if the Emperor Komei uh, is not the only thing that you're going for, but but in this case, he's he, we're gonna play all the way through until he dies. I think that's what that cam this campaign is gonna be. It's just gonna be the life of of Komei. The Komei is the way. If that sounds like fun, then then let's do it. Let's do it. Komei is the way. How 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 enormous can Komei get with his his anger and and standing in the way and the fact that we're playing on 1.0.3, so he's probably gonna live to be like 95 years old. That's that is the the counterfactual. Um, so for the speedrunners and the the people trying to optimize a campaign and stuff, I'm gonna talk about that stuff too. Because again, we're not we're not just talking about nothing. We're talking about the game in this campaign. This one, these jobs are for the Japanese. We're gonna discriminate against like three people. It doesn't matter. There's there as playing as Japan. One of the advantages that you have. Uh, I hinted at this in the diary video, but like it's just amazingly stable. And so you can have a lot of radicals. They don't matter. They don't, they don't. So radicals, radicals only matter because having radicals is gonna in, impact the uh, happiness of your influence groups and it's gonna cause turmoil. And if your interest groups are happy and turmoil isn't causing you a lot of problems, then just, it does not matter. It doesn't, ignore it, it's nonsense. 
It is straight up nonsense. It is a number that means absolutely nothing. Same with taxation capacity. It just means absolutely nothing. Like it, it, if you're taxing peasants, if you're taxing real people with real jobs, then it, it means something. But like the income on peasants is not how they stay alive. They stay alive utilizing something called subsistence. Um, so that is just gonna give them a plus three bonus on all of the input goods that they have to to have their uh their quality of life, their standard of living. And so they just like, it's impossible to kill them basically. And so they can put up with a lot of abuse, but they also just like make no money. Cause like, look at the, look at the building that they work on. The building that they work on is going to give them essentially a zero wage. Cause none of these things they're making in large amounts except for grain. And because there's so many of them, they're making a ton of grain. That's something we can talk about. That's, that's educational. So at the beginning of the game, you'll see I have zero authority. If you're really speedrunning, you probably want some authority because that's going to increase your um, enactment speed, which is going to help you power through laws. But if you're playing a campaign, I actually don't think it's worth it. I think I think it I think it's worth it when your legitimacy is really low. I think when your legitimacy is really high, it's not worth it. And so what we started with is what I, I call uh, services and sin. And that's just like you always tax services because it's really easy to build. And building up things that you that you uh, tax in your consumption taxes is a very powerful thing to do mechanically. So if you haven't thought about it, that's okay. Like, this is a very complicated game. There's a lot of stuff going on. But basically, consumption taxes for things that you're going to be building locally is just a lot more useful. Even if you're intending on, ex on exporting a lot of them, it doesn't matter. You cannot prevent your pops from being able to buy stuff unless you have like a ban on it. Um, and so, like, if you're making things, your pops are going to buy them. And so you want to make sure that the, the things that you're taxing in terms of consumption are things that you're, that you're going to be happy building. And at the beginning of the game, right now, all you're building mostly is agricultural stuff and as Japan. And so you can't, like, you can't tax any good stuff. You can't tax luxury clothes. It's worthless. It's it, absolutely worthless. It's, it's one of the things that makes playing outside of Japan so much easier is that um, not all your laws are bad. This is this just all of your laws are bad. This is going to be a very, very, very broad sweep tutorial. And I'm going to talk about so many things. And I really hope you learn a lot. And every time you learn something, I would love it if you'd tell me that you learned something and what you learned. And if you disagree with something and, and you, you want to talk about that, feel free to but there are going to be some things where i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to show me video proof because i'm gonna show you video proof in this one um i might i might i might do reloads i might i might like if he dies early i'm gonna reload i just want you to know that right now because he's 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 important both to the narrative and to the mechanic and if you save scum you're doing the same thing Actually, literally, I'm probably just gonna say scum if he dies. That's that's probably easier than using console, uh, or maybe we'll use console just to find his replacement. Because because that's another thing I think they want to. I think they should add that to the game. I think there should be a way to to use money and authority um, for a short period of time to like remove an IG leader. I think that should be something that's in the game. It makes sense. Don't tell me it doesn't make sense because it does. Money and authority is exactly how leadership operates in real life, and so like if you if you and if like if you disagree, you're wrong. <laughs> I'm gonna see. I'm gonna need to see video proof if you think that money and authority does not describe perfectly human interactions and what drives them. Um, yeah, it, it's just if he dies, I'm gonna I'm probably gonna find a successor. That's what I'll do. I'll just dig for a successor who has good good traits. But but we we should be able to do that in game. All right, um, let's see, that's, I think that's 15 minutes, that's 14 minutes. I'm going to try to make these these videos shorter, just so that way, if people really want to learn things, they can tell me in faster time, and I can and I can try to respond to it. Uh, that's Walker, this is We Play Games, this is uh, Kome is the Way, this is going to be our narrative and educational campaign, and then we're going to have an, uh, a comedy campaign, and right now that's Manifesto Destiny. I love them both, they're both my children, and don't tell me that I don't love one more than the other. Like, I love both parts of these, because they really, they really engage me in, in so many ways, and I hope they engage you in so many ways. Okay, bye.